can claim via scanning the barcode and this NFT is only minted today to the attendees of this token engineering track days, but it's valid for forever, it's non-transferable and you A, can prove your token engineering knowledge with it and B, you have a say in the community, for example, in distributing funds for token engineering public goods projects, there will be another grants round for token engineering projects in August. Um, TE Commons is going to run it, we collaborate with TE Commons and you'll have an additional voting weight in case you hold this NFT, so make sure to claim it. And it works like you request it, we'll confirm and then you get it airdropped. No if needed, it's on Optimism. Just for your information now. Okay, but you have to mint it today, right? Uh, it's only distributed to attendees today. Uh, you might have some more time, but keep in mind it's it's a very you know exclusive thing because it's only for this very particular event. All right, let's go, Chris. The stage nice. is yours. Thank you so much, Angela. Um, good evening, everyone. Welcome to the presentation. My name is Christoph Paruch, and I am from Vienna, and I'm represented here. Um, with ADIM and Token Engineering Labs. Token Engineering Labs is the company that I founded and ADIM is the project that I'm currently working on. So I'm happy to share all of the insights of what I'm working at right now, but also giving you an overview of how I became a token engineer over the last five, six, seven years. Um, this is an interactive presentation. So we've collected 10 questions from the audience, from the token engineering community. And I will address them in my presentation. I have uh, some, something prepared. So like the first part of the presentation will be you know, a, present, a guided talk from me on trying to address some of the questions. But then at the end, there is a list of all of the questions and we're going to make some time to talk about them individually. OK, so what makes me qualified to talk about this today? Maybe first question before we start. Who of you guys in this room is already a token engineer? Raise of hands. One, two, three. Okay, who is an aspiring token engineer who would want to become one? One, two, three, four, five, six, okay, much more. This is nice. And who of you is only here because there are no other talks at the ECC <laughs> right now? Thank you so much for your honesty. Okay, so who I am? Uh, my name is Christoph Paruch. Um, I am a researcher and PhD candidate at the Crypto Econ Research Lab at the VU in Vienna. Um, which means that I started a PhD in crypto economics and token engineering five years ago something that is still ongoing, but I will tell you why. There are several reasons why this is still ongoing. On the other hand, I'm the founder of Token Engineering Labs, which is both a community and a company. So we, what we do is we consult clients who want to design their token economy, who want to build the token systems, and we help them with conceptualizing the, uh, the problem, we help them to specify the requirements, we help them to make the first designs and build numerical simulations. Right now, I'm working in the role of the CTO for one company, which is ADIM, a Los Angeles-based company that is um, focusing on decentralized community content creation and tokenization. My background is in mathematics, so I have a formal education in mathematics. I have a master's degree uh, from the Technical University in Vienna. Uh, with the focus on applied economic uh, modeling, and I have some working experience in banking and finance. So after I finished my studies, I went um, to work in banking, systems integration for, for example, regulatory uh, systems or portfolio management systems. Um, so software-heavy consulting. And after some time, I found out that this doesn't excite me at all, and I wanted to transition to crypto. So in 2018, um, this was the time when I started my PhD and decided to become a token engineer without even the possibility of knowing what this is, because back then it didn't exist, right? So um, we met Angela in 2018, I think it was, um, at the Token Engineering Global Gathering in Berlin, where the community was started. So many of the speakers today who participated in the track um, of, uh, at, at ECC are, are people whom I met um, quite some time ago who contributed to the creation of the space. And what I'm very proud of and what, I've, what I see happening um, is that more and more people are engaging in the community. More and more people are contributing. We have so many new attendees, we have so many new participants, and everyone wants to learn from themselves, but also wants to contribute and teach others. 
Um, my focus in my research and in my applied research work was on token engineering and crypto economics, and I've been contributing to the token engineering space since 2018, where one, am, among other things, I've authored or co-authored the token engineer, engineering fundamentals course. So some of you who might have heard of it, or some of you who might have done this already, I was one of the authors who contributed in writing the contents. Okay, so let's start now, and because this was one of the questions. So one of the questions that I received for the talk today was, what are the, what are the key principles and what are the key concepts in token engineering that everyone should know about? So let me give you some motivation. Let me give you some introduction of what we're talking about here today. So this is one of the central slides um, of my presentation because it simply connects what crypto economics and token engineering is. And those things go in parallel. So on the one hand, you have the theory. So you're asking questions about the systems that you're designing. You're asking questions about um, what is it that uh, your, um, your system is supposed to facilitate? How is it that your system is supposed to perform? What are the goals? What are the performance metrics that you want to, um, to, to target in your design? Basically asking why questions. If you know what you want to build, or if you understand what you're designing, if you understand what you're analyzing, then you can apply token engineering, which is the methodology. This means that this is a set of instruments, and you've heard so many of them today in all of the presentations that we had at the EatCon and at the presentations from, from previous speakers. Every one of them was showing us which tools they use and apply in their thinking and in their analysis to answer those questions, okay? And there is a variety of tools, and then there is no one specific tool that uh, is you know, the best of all. There are very tailored to particular solutions, and I encourage you to learn most of them, or understand most of them, and select then the ones that are most suitable for your own practice. So you see that those things, crypto economics, the theory, and token engineering, the methodology, go hand in hand, and you have to apply both. So you have to understand the concepts, but you also have to learn the methods. And what is it that we are doing, and this is kind of one of the benefits that we are building on DLT, decentralized infrastructure, is that we can bridge the gap between economics and engineering. Because this is something that was not able before. Because when you were building analog economic systems, you were not quite so sure about the state of the system. You were not quite so sure about the metrics or the values of metrics or values of, of particular parameters because you had a big latency between observation and measurement observation and um, implementation of policies, which means that you were not really sure what's happening and you couldn't really build robust methods or you couldn't build robust mechanisms that would help you to guide or control this economy. So with the advent of blockchain technology, now you have full data transparency, you have full knowledge of the state, and you have full um, security that the, that the values that you're observing are really the true ones because you know that the, the, um, the information is stored in a tamper-proof way. And this allows you to build economics on steroids. So this is what token engineering and crypto economics is is basically building economic systems that are facilitating heavy data and robust methodologies. So any of you who attended my, one of my presentations before um, might have noticed that I've added something to it. It's like we didn't have this guy here over there. So the idea is that you are using abstraction to formulate your problems. And you are using different engineering methodologies, and you see here a map of mathematics, for example, where different um, tools, methods, or even domains within mathematics are explained that are used to articulate or to approach different problems. On the left hand, you see the map of economics, or the map of economic school thinking, which is um, a science that emerged uh, roughly 250 to 270 years ago. You, can, you could argue with, uh, with Adam Smith and, and his uh, you know, book, The Invisible Hand. Um, so the theory about the invisible hand, which is basically a way to trying to understand social interactions. But if you study this map, and I'm happy to, to, to distribute this in a higher resolution, 
is you will see that out of this way of thinking of first economists or first uh, sociologists, many different other schools of thinking emerged. So there is no one unique way to think about economics. There is no unique way to think about how to treat uh, social interactions. This is heavily reliant on the assumptions that you're making. So if you want to make any conclusions in the domain of economics, you are really, really relying on the assumptions that you're making um, for your modeling and for your understanding of the system. Now, the synthesis of those two approaches, facilitated by the blockchain technology, allows you to apply heavy machinery to solve those problems. Okay? And this is what crypto economics is doing. What you need to understand, and I encourage you to look into one of the publications from the Research Institute, I think it's from 2018 or 2019, Voschenkir and Zarkham published The Foundations of Crypto Economic Systems. And two key um, informations that are included in this, in this paper are um, depicted here on the left and right hand side. So I want to discuss two very important properties of crypto economic systems or tokenized decentralized systems. One of them is that they are very interdisciplinary. So if you want to become a token engineer, you have to basically work multi or interdisciplinary in all of those fields, which is quite of heavy, right? On the other hand, if you want to become a token engineer, you have to understand many layers of abstraction. So you are building microeconomic systems, you are building microeconomic mechanisms that if then, if, if um, interactions happen, emerge into something on the microeconomic scale. So you see that you are designing the microeconomy, but what you're interested in is the microeconomic emergence of the effects on the top level. This is what you really want to control. This is what you really want to, to observe. You want to build a system that has p particular properties, but you are not in the power of controlling those properties you're more so much in the power of defining the microeconomic mechanisms and controllers on the microeconomic level in the hope that if aggregated, the effects will emerge in a way that is desirable. So this is the property of cryptoeconomic systems, multi-layered approach. But this is kind of leading in today's presentation, right? What do you need to know and where are you coming from? So if you want to become a token engineer, you should be familiar at least with one of those fields, because this would be the point of departure. This would be your starting point of your journey. This is where you would say, okay, I understand something about this, and now let me either A, specialize in this direction, or B, and or try to understand as much as possible about all of the other fields so that you can synthesize your knowledge into understanding the problems that you're analyzing. Because this, in the end, is kind of the challenge. You will not be the one token engineer on a project. You will not be the one person responsible for solving those issues. You will be working in interdisciplinary teams across uh, you know, different departments and across different specializations. And we heard this already today, um, especially right now on the panel, that um, you need to to focus on, on one of the problems uh, that you can contribute to, but very important is the communication between the departments, and you need to be able to articulate your problems in a way such that other domain experts are able to take this information and feed this in into their thinking so that together you can solve this problem. The next slide is just depicting a typical standardized token engineering process. We've heard this uh, quite a bit already today. Maybe not so um, like direct. Like, so I, 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 know, I don't know if anyone had this slide already um, on the screen, but um, everyone who was talking today was either talking about something that is related to the discovery phase, defining the problem, or something that is related to the design phase, which is specifying and formulating the problem. Or mostly what was presented today was the deployment phase, which is a numerical experimentation of the models that you've built in order to understand the problem and the trade-off between different parameters. So we've seen a lot of simulations and a lot of simulation graphs today and from different uh, presenters who are just showing in their project and with the tools that they have developed or they are using, how they have been tackling different types of problems. And this is kind of the process that you go through every day. So you first try to define what you're talking about, you formulate it in, into mathematical language, and then you run experiment. 
to feed in back into the design process. And I have this depicted on the next slide. So this is the job of a token engineer, where you basically continuously model, simulate, and tune, and you do this iteratively. You don't ever stop, because also mentioned on the panel, full life cycle perspective. So there is no final project design, a token design. There is no final version of your economy. You are continuously either designing or monitoring and governing your economy to make sure that everything goes according to plan. Okay? Um, and what is the biggest challenge or your biggest goal? The biggest goal is the alignment of incentives in your system across your participants and time. And you have to think of it from two different perspectives. So here you have the temporal perspective, you have a pre alignment of preferences over time for individuals is not trivial. So you have different um, stakeholders in your economy. You have different participants, and everyone maybe wants something different at a different point in time. Some of them are more impatient. Some of them can wait. It's kind of difficult to provide mechanisms so that everyone is satisfied. So this is one of the trade-offs and one of the alignments that you have to achieve. And the other is the aggregation of preferences between individuals and the system level. So you, every one of them has my optic individual um, you know, um, optimization problems that they are solving. So they are trying to optimize for themselves. But if you let them do this, you might come to a game theoretical outcome where in aggregate the system will not perform as intended. So the aggregation of preferences between individuals and system goals, this is kind of the very key challenge that you have to solve. And now consider that you have to do both things at the same time, okay? Good, okay. So this was kind of the anchoring of like what are the key important concepts, what do you need to consider, how do you need to approach the problem, what do you need to do? And now let me give you some background of how I did it or how my personal journey went, uh, but please consider that this is not career advice, okay? So what you have to do is you have to strike the right balance between three pillars, um, between education, project work, and community engagement. Um, because you need to deepen your understanding about the th theories and the concepts and, and the applications and the tools that I've outlined before. So this is one of the things. So you can, for example, select a suitable university program for yourself if you are at this level right now, if this is your stage, if you are a student, try to find something that fits into your mm, vision of token engineering. There is no token engineering program out there yet. So like you cannot apply anywhere and go to a university and say, I want to become a token engineer. But considering all of what I said before, and given your background and your interests, you might be able to select something that helps you to focus on one of the areas, deepen your understanding, and then transition to, um, to this token engineering uh, profession by uh, conducting work in this area. If you are already um, more advanced in your career um, and you don't have time to start a university program, which might be the case, what you can do is you can go to the Token Engineering Academy and complete the TE Fundamentals course, which is a free online course that you can do that will demonstrate the token engineering project applied on one of the examples that we found very useful and very you know, well known in the space on Uniswap. So we've demonstrated in this course, and you will learn how to do it yourself, how to design a decentralized exchange, going through the discovery, design, and deployment phase of the model. Once you have this base covered, so your education, now um, you should also make sure that you're not only learning in theory, but also learning in practice. So the best way that you can do is um, work for a project, start your own project, or just participate and learn in their community. Next, what you also have to do is uh, you have to um, make community engagement in the sense of crypto lives from people who are contributing to the space. Crypto li lives from people who are starting meetups, who are um, making events, who are learning together. Do this. If, you don't, if you're not already a member in one of your local meetups, just start one yourself. So let me focus on, on each of those three points uh, individually. Um, first of all, I said this already before, select a program depending on your level, interest, and background. 
this is the easiest thing to do. For me, it was a PhD course. So uh, I wanted to really learn how to build token systems. There, was, there wasn't anything out there in 2018. I decided to start a PhD in this and basically uh, define my own curriculum and learn things that I found very interesting and applicable. There are some online courses. I mentioned here three because I know of them. So there is this TE Fundamentals course where you can learn the token engineering process. There is a um, CatCat educational course where you can learn how to build um, software models in, in CatCat. Um, modeling your economy. And if you want to learn uh, Solidity, you can go to CryptoZombies.com or .io where you can learn to build your own Solidity programs um, applied on one particular example. You should continue learning. So it, it means that you should curate uh, your own list of YouTube channels that you find most interesting and uh, continue watching them. There are so many different materials out there. Um, depending on your level again, you can start with very simple overviews of you know, projects presenting themselves, what they have bil uh, built, or which uh, simulations and analytics they have performed. But also you can really open up, uh, for example, MIT, uh, MIT courses and learn um, a course on um, you can you can do a course on uh, on, on um, optimization. You can do a course on game theory. So so whatever you really find interesting, and you you have the time, and you want to really specialize in this field, try to find online resources that allow you to do this on your own. Define your own curriculum. This is crucial. So there is no one out there who will tell you what is best for you and what you need to, to, to be able to, to execute this profession, simply because it's so huge. So there is an, no, no standard way or no standard um, knowledge that you need to know in order to be able to do this. You focus for yourself. You choose for yourself what you want to do, which domain um, in this field you want to, want to become an expert in, and then you go. Keep reading books, read and discuss academic papers. There is so much out there uh, for the last five years, so many publications about any of the topics that you're interested in. And sometimes it's difficult to find, but um, it is very easy if you have a point of departure and if you have um, academic friends to ask them, or you can attend an academic conference, um, to ask them what is something that you would recommend me to understand for example, Uniswap. What is something that um, you, um, you would um, recommend me to understand um, economic markets? There is literature out there. Um, you have to learn and practice coding. This is a tool that you need. So if you don't know already how to do it, start um, online courses on Python, start online courses on CatCat, whatever brings you uh, joy and whatever makes you happy. Um, Twitter is a very good place to participate in discussions, especially there are people out there who are summarizing information in a very efficient and convenient way. So if you follow the right people, and if you, um, I know that uh, the Token Engineering Academy is also doing this, uh, you are able to get so much information and so much references just from simply uh, reading a thread on a topic and, and, and pursuing this further. Project work. Um, Again, if you, if you are able or if you're willing to go to academia and uh, start a program, uh, either on the master's or, or maybe on the PhD level, you will be working on projects. So this is kind of what is happening if you are um, working at a university. They will give you something to work at. They will provide you with, uh, with funding for a particular research problem, and you will be the one researching this and, and working on this um, deliberately. So this is one way to get exposure to such type of problems. If you are not in the academic path, you can go to projects and try to contribute to their existing work. So this is what I recommend people. Look up the project that you're interested in, look at the documentation, look at the web page, look at the GitHub repos, and try uh, to find out what they already have. They very often also have a list of questions of what they are currently interested in. And if you are um, able to provide some guidance on how to solve it, or even you know, contributing to um, next steps in this direction, you will very often be able to receive funding for this. So if there is a project that is interesting for you, if you can identify a research topic that you can help with, go this way and, and make it happen. You can apply for grants in crypto, this is happening. So there are many projects that are saying, if there is someone who is um, solving this for us, or is, who is willing to work on this for us, um, then you can apply for grants that will fund you. Another way to go is to start your own enterprise. 
So you can just you know, um, start a project, start a company, start something that, uh, where you will dedicate your time on working with others. And if you're good enough and you're capable enough, you are able to sell your services. If you're able to apply for a job, do it. Any job is good. So like getting your foot into the door in crypto is the way to go. If you're not able to do it, there are many projects who will allow you to volunteer or work in their marketing departments where you can also contribute and step by step learn on the job. Community work, start your own meetup or a discussion group. You can do this online, you can do this in real life, whatever makes you happy. Um, it's important to build your own community. It's important to have a stage where you can demonstrate your knowledge, where you can um, present your expertise, where you can, con you know, it's very important to have recordings of your sessions, to have something out there that shows that you are really actively working on this. This is what projects are looking for. They will give you a job, they will give you a position if you can demonstrate that you've been contributing for the last four years, five years, three years, whatever, to one particular community. You've been working on those projects, you've been developing those tools, and so on and so on. Okay, so what is the goal? Whatever you choose to do, it would be best to do all of this, but if you don't have time, select particular areas that you want to focus on. Your goal would be to learn this. So you would want to keep in mind, you want to, to apply this, you want to learn to apply be able to apply the state-of-the-art token engineering process, right? So whether it's discovery, design, deployment, anywhere there, and if there is something that you can do, if there is something that you can contribute to, this is what you want, uh, want to do. And you want to be able to create sustainable and robust uh, economic systems. So focus on the long term. Don't focus on something that might be attractive today, but will not be attractive in one year. So don't go with the hype, don't try to build something that is very you know, exciting, but try to go back to first principles, try to understand the theories, try to understand the methodologies. If you build a toolkit and if you build um, out you know, the skills and expertise that you can apply long term, it doesn't matter where crypto goes in the next two to five years, because you will be there and you will be able to apply what you already know. This is universal. Um, and it's very easy um, to, to do this if you understand that the crypto economies and web uh, three systems that you're working on are complex systems, right? So like it's, it, there is so much to understand, it's so tricky to capture. If you pick out one topic that is interesting for you, that is where you're, where you're brilliant, um, you will have a space there to, to, um, to shine. Use formal methodologies which allow you mathematical modeling and mechanisms and the quant uh, quantitative validation. So we heard today already that it's very heavy on the numerical side, it's very heavy on the simulation side. So if in doubt, um, just you know, focus on modeling and simulations because this is what will eventually be very important in crypto. So you will have this validation of economic designs f facilitated by the numerical uh, data that is available um, you can provide your expertise to this. You want to become an expert in one of those areas. Uh, again, ideally, if you can, all of them, but if not, choose one to start with. For the discovery phase, you would want to be an expert in collecting system requirements for further design to define the appropriate point of departure. So a lot of conversations with project teams, with early stage startups, with early stage token designs is, what do you guys really want? And how do you want the system to perform? And they are able to explain this maybe in business speak. They are able to explain this in you know, like their language that they are used to um, in their strategic or business uh, um, discussions, but they are not able to discuss, to define this in the term of system requirements, in the terms of um, necessities, of for system performance that you would want to have as an engineer. So your job in the very first early stage of a project in the discovery phase very often is translation between what the team is telling you from what they would want to have from a business side into formal mathematical language to be able to pin down requirements for your system components and for your system mechanisms. And if you can excel at this, you are already in there because you can tell them what they need to communicate to someone who is supposed to design your system and their system. And even if you are not the one who is able of defining the mechanisms or building the, the uh, simulations, you already know how to communicate with someone who knows. And it's much more efficient if you are the expert in this. 
you want to be able to apply first principles to design mechanisms. So this is universal. Try to open a book, open economics, um, um, control theory, um, whatever. Open a book um, that tells you how to design mechanisms, that t tells you how to design mechanisms and components from first principles. Understand this. Understand that this is universal and make sure that you are able to use this terminology and use this language in the context of the project that you're working on. But you will always be able to apply first principles if you start from the start. And this is nothing that, some, uh, something that no one can take away from you. You can also become an expert in building models and utilizing simulation frameworks, but in order to do this, you kind of needs the first two steps already. So you need to have the system requirements and you need to have a mechanism specified and, and designed from first principles. But this is an entry point for many people in token engineering as well. So there are people who say, I'm very good at coding, I don't know nothing about me economic mechanisms or system requirements, but if you tell me what you want to simulate, I can do this for you. And if you are this type of person, Find someone who is covering the first two um, parts of the process and focus very much on the simulation expertise that you can build for yourself. Contribute to your team's success. And finally, once you have built the simulations, you have run the numerical experiments, uh, you want to give um, recommendations because this is what it's all about. So if you are able to make interpretations of your results, and give um, to the stakeholders, the system stakeholders, um, uh, sufficient recommendations about design alternatives or the impacts on system performance or the trade-offs between system goals, then you can help to guide the this, this discussion on future system design iterations. And ideally, those are all of the things that you should be able to do, but start somewhere. So many people say, I don't know anything about mathematics, I don't know anything about Python, I don't understand anything about um, about systems engineering, choose one of those things and become an expert in it. Ultimately, again, the process that you would want to, uh, to facilitate, and you would be a part of the team that at some point you are providing your expertise to. So maybe it's here with the system requirements, maybe it's here with the mechanism design, first principles, uh, formulations and definitions of, of system properties, or maybe here in the numerical uh, realm where you would run simulations and, and look at the data and look at the, at the results. Good. What we can do now, uh, I think I'm going to skip this because this would be emphasizing again some of the tasks that you're doing during the discovery phase, um, which is basically, remember, pinning down system requirements. In the ecosystem design phase, you are specifying and formulating the model. And in the deployment phase, you are making numerical experiments. So we can skip this for now because we talked about this. I want to leave you with three tools and frameworks that I've particularly found very interesting in my work before we go to the questions from the community. But please, um, again, this is something that I found very useful. It's not exclusive. So it doesn't mean that we have here uh, represented everything that, that there can be. So, in the very early stage of my journey, 2018, 2019, I found very useful the Token Ecosystem Creation Handbook by Outlier Ventures. And this is something that I also used in my teaching at the university where I held a course on token engineering on the undergraduate level. So we went through this handbook and we were discussing with the students, we were discussing um, the descriptions there, the plans for token design, different instruments and tools, different theoretical concepts. And I know that many of the people or some of the people who are here today and have been presenting on the stage have also contributed to, um, to, to the writing of this handbook. So this is very uh, still useful. It's a very good overview. I think it has 80 to 100 pages where you would, you know, just read it through and you see many, many different um, applicable things for your token ecosystem design. For the design phase, I want to point you to a publication by Tsarkam and Shorish uh, from 2022 uh, where they described generalized dynamical systems um, a framework that is very helpful in understanding how to design token economic mechanisms. Um, the point of this is to say that you are making a distinction between system movements or the mechanisms that the system can do by itself versus 
any behavioral assumptions that you have um, underlying for your agents that are interacting with the system. And this is very important because the first step of mechanism design is making sure that your system works regardless how your agents interact with your economy. So if you are able to provide a framework or to understand the problem in a way so that regardless of what, which actions are chosen or which strategies are pursued, that your system will upkeep particular properties or will have particular um, invariant um, properties or, or, um, or settings, then you know that your system cannot break, it cannot fail. And this is the first thing that you want to um, to ensure when you're designing mechanisms that uh, because you don't know how agents or the market will interact with your economy once it's out there. And if you make sure that the mechanisms that you, that you build cannot break in the sense of they will always have some properties, then you are good to go with pursuing further how the system will evolve if particular assumptions are made about agents' interactions with the system. Because this is what you can do in the next step. And once you have defined your model, once you have defined your mechanisms, you can try to investigate, given assumptions about agent behaviors or agent interactions with those mechanisms, what the predictions about, of the evolution of your system is. This is also interesting. And for the numerical experiments, I would like to point you to uh, two of the frameworks that have been very prominently already presented today, which is CatCat and TokenSpice, um, two Python uh, frameworks, uh, libraries that are used um, in simulation experiments. Um, CatCat is supporting the GDS framework very well, and TokenSpice is supporting um, EVM agent-based uh, simulations very well. With this, um, my formal uh, part of the presentation is, is over, and I can, uh, I can f um, we can go over to the questions. Um, if you don't mind, let me just go them through. Some of them I already answered. What are the key principles and concepts in token engineering? I hope that my talk made it clear. I hope that I covered this already today. I have non-engineering background. Python and math is new to me. Can I ever become a token engineer? Yes, if you invest uh, sufficient time, and B, if you specialize on the things that do not require Python and math, but eventually I would encourage you to learn this. What were the challenges and lessons learned from token engineering projects that you've worked on? Challenges are obviously, you know, when working with startups, it's always very uh, funding constrained. Um, there is there has not been much emphasis on token engineering over the last few years, so there was not this understanding in the community that we need to model, design, and test and validate our systems. Um, an understanding that has um, become um, more, more and more prominent in the, re uh, in the recent years when people found out that um, it's not only good to have a good white paper or a good implementation, it's also good to understand the implications of the design choices to make sure that the systems do not fail because it's system um, critical infrastructure. What are the most important tools or frameworks that you recommend for token engineers? Um, I covered this. How do you see the future of token engineering evolving? How do you see the role of a token engineer evolving? In my view, um, token engineering will be very central in all of the projects who are building token systems, and you will see token engineering departments that will focus on design, and validation, and uh, experimentation with models of the system. Um, so there is a um, higher and higher emphasis um, of, of the, on the importance of, of those roles in, in, in the crypto startup. What is a fair salary for a junior token engineer? This is a very tricky question because it really depends on your previous work, on your expertise, on your willingness to work on a project, how desperate are you to really transition to crypto versus um, you know, how much do you rely on a stable source of income. Um, I think that, um, just to answer this in a very diplomatic way, a fair salary would be everything uh, compared to any other engineering role. If you are junior in the sense of you don't have any work expertise, you can count on um, a typical starting salary for engineers, something around 50K maybe. How can I identify the right problems to solve through token engineering? I feel sometimes lost when discuss uh, discussing with crypto projects who look for a token design. Um, here, the emphasis is on the token engineering process. So if you're equipped with the standardized methodology and if you're equipped with the tools that you can use, you can always frame the question in a way such that it helps you to make progress 
in the process. And this is the key. So um, learn to communicate with your clients, learn to communicate with them in a way so that you can tick off the boxes in the process and make progress accordingly. How can anyone practice an objective perspective of the systems we are in so that we can recognize the incentives in these systems and the behaviors chosen or automatic in response? And what can anyone do with this understanding? This is kind of a very tricky question because it emphasizes that the token engineer or the system designer is basically the person making all of the design decisions and um, making assumptions about importance of different alternatives already. So the earlier you are in the process and the more involved you are in designing the system, it's very difficult to keep this objective perspective, but keeping in mind that you are the one who should optimize for something in the system design. So what you then can um, try to do is you, s you want to focus back on key system purpose or key system goals. What is the system supposed to do? What are the objectives? What are the key metrics to measure the performance with respect to those goals? And if you are able to pin those things down very well, then you are not subject to any subjective decisions because you can always say, those are the goals that have been articulated. This is what we are optimizing for. This is what we are designing for. Are there any specific programming languages or technical skills that I should focus on to become a token engineer? For start, uh, you should, uh, you should um, focus on Python and uh, Solidity or add the language of the project that you, that you are working on. Going over TE fundamentals is, um, it feels there is so much to learn. What should my priorities be if almost everything is new to me? Just learn the vocabulary. So if it's very complicated, if you don't understand it, then you have acknowledged that this is nothing that you can become overnight, but it's a very good step to already start learning and understanding the vocabulary, understanding the concepts, understanding what it's all about, and engage in discussion with fellow token engineers to make progress on your own. I think that's it. So thank you so much for your, uh, for your attendance, and thank you for your patience. Would you guys like to add an 11th to 50th question to Chris? So any, any questions that haven't been covered in the talk yet? Um, yeah, taking a step back, um, what was one of the biggest anti-patterns in token design that you saw during the ICO boom? And what is one of the most interesting innovations you've seen since? Anti-patterns. Uh, anti um, ICO boom, I mean, this was kind of the thing when you started designing token systems in the very early stage. This is by coincidence where uh, I also entered the space 2017, 2018, is that people were maximizing for profit and for sales, right? So like this was kind of the, me the me mentality. This was kind of the objective of why do you build the token system in the first place? So the biggest change in paradigms over time was people realizing that Tokens can have different uh, functionalities other than raising capital. And um, building your systems with an eye on system performance, system goals, uh, token utility, and not so much the financial aspects. Thank you. We had more questions. Here, can we hand over the mic? Yeah. Uh, thanks for the talk. So as you're doing PhD in this like uh, crypto economics and may I know what are some active research areas with focus in software engineering? Yeah. What are the active areas research, of research? research areas? This is very independent. So I can, I, I'm not in a position to talk about this, especially because the more you dive deeper into the rabbit hole of your personal research and your personal project that you're working on, you know, I have such a stack of papers that I'm supposed to read and such a st stack of papers that I want to read eventually. So um, you don't really ever get to, you know, understanding um, all, of the, all of the interesting topics and interesting questions that, that you should focus on. I can tell you um, more about problems in my work area of work, but uh, this is not related to software engineering. Thank you. Thank you, Chris, for the clarity that you bring to the space. I'm wondering at 
your university, uh, what department is the token engineering class taught under? And also, do you see a strategy for bringing token engineering to uh, other universities? Yeah, thank you so much. This is a very tricky question because um, so we had the Crypto Economics Lab, uh, which was an individual institution at the University of Economics. And um, at the time, we had five to seven um, members or collaborators, um, two professors, uh, seven students, two PhD, three PhDs, th three bachelors. So, like, it was very diversified. This was in 2018, 2019. Um, what then happened is the challenge that we had was to bootstrapping this to the whole field or across all the departments at the university because it's very, very difficult to teach something or to talk about something where you, when you don't have the proper academic publications or papers and when the topic that you're talking about is so interdisciplinary that it's very difficult to bring everyone uh, to the same table. So what we focused doing then was um, a PhD seminar uh, where we just collected papers from different directions and all of the professors from different departments could contribute with some ideas on what they would find particularly interesting in this field, which was very, very, uh, you know, um, nascent in 2018. So like there were no, no real publications. Now, right now it would, be, it would be much, much, much more productive. Um, so this is how we continued our, our research over the years. And the course that I've been, I've been teaching, because you asked about this, um, was settled under, um, you know, in the department of uh, production systems of one of the professors who was very willing and very interested in pursuing this further. So it was basically, you know, personal commitment, personal interest of one person who said, please make a specialization about blockchain and token engineering in my area of expertise because we can provide you with a slot to, to teach in this, in this department. Um, the challenge of, of building, a, you know, token curricula or blockchain curricula, token engineering curricula, is that, um, you know, the latency of what you work on, you are very here today, you are very at the, at the pulse of, of, you know, the, the heartbeat of, of token engineering. So people who are presenting here today um, are basically, um, you know, talking firsthand for, about the problems that they're solving on a very high sophisticated level, but you wouldn't be able to transition this into an academic setting because there is so much more needed in academia uh, such that um, a young science can mature. You need, you know, peer reviews, you need journals, you need editors, you need academic conferences, you need to hold teaching programs that take up to five to ten years for a new generation of, you know, people to, um, to be developed in this field. So I kind of hope that there is going to be a synergy between the, the token engineering space that we, are, that we are demonstrating here today and interested universities who will pick up on this and try to anchor this domain in, the, in one of the fields, because this is the easiest thing to do, to say how to approach this from um, you know, an optimization side, or how to ap ap approach this from a robotic side, how to approach this from a software engineering side, how to approach this from a mathematical side, and then you could build up different departments that are specializing in this eventually over time. Any more questions? I guess there are still some questions to solve for us, but for today, I think we are really done. I mean, we had such a great program. We had such a great audience. It was a lot of fun. Thank you all for coming. And before you all run away, let's take a picture. So I'd like to ask you all on stage, let's take a picture of this special day before you walk away. And mark your calendar for Saturday for the bar camp, but come over. So... <laughs>